Hey class, uh, first session of the semester. Welcome to Cardio Circuit. Uh, today is our fitness test. So we are doing the first fitness test of the semester. There are three total. And if you notice on your form, which you should have downloaded so that you can put your results in after this workout, um, that you'll notice there's three different columns. And so the number one column uh, is what we will be answering and putting a, our results in for today, okay? So we're not doing everything three times, we're just answering all the number one column, all the exercises in the number one column, okay? Um, you do need that paper or you can have just a piece of paper and a pen to write down your results. Um, we'll go in order and then you can transfer that information to the form, okay? And then you're going to obviously need to save it and then submit it back to me uh, in a document. So uh, we're going to go ahead and answer all of those, um, uh, give results for all of those uh, exercises. We're giving our best effort today. Um, you'll need a supportive mat. So as far as equipment goes, just make sure you have some kind of supportive area within your, your space. So. I do have an exercise mat that I work out on, but I also have an actual mat, a Pilates mat, but you can use a yoga mat. You can use maybe, you know, um, a pad or even a towel rolled up, you know, slightly, or maybe even a pillow. Uh, you'll need a mat or supportive area for uh, your back for exercises if, um, you know, if that's challenging, and as well as maybe your elbows uh, for exercises when we are low planking. So just keep that in mind. Uh, you don't have to have that today, but I would just recommend it. Um, also, you're going to want to have water um, and then maybe a small hand towel um, as the weather gets warmer um, throughout the semester. Um, obviously, you need space. So, you know, the space that I have here is in my garage, um, and this is where I will be teaching the class. Um, I might go outside at some point when it's not too hot, uh, but you know, you find the space that works for you. It's not an extremely dynamic, uh, class. So this space is what I teach in. So we're not going to be traveling very far. So I'm talking about like a good 10 by 10, uh, space, but I stay pretty much in a five by five. Uh, area when I do the exercises. So you do the best that you know is for you um, Even in your living room or you know, whatever you need um, Let's see. So today we're gonna start with our resting heart rate. And so after the resting heart rate uh, We'll go into just a really brief warm-up um, To just you know get our muscles warm um, and ready for the exercises to test so again, like I said, giving our best effort today as best as you can. Um, but that's kind of like the, the positive, the, the silver lining to uh, distance learning is that you don't have anybody around you um, for fear of comparing. So um, comparison. So you're doing it on your own and um, we will get started. So resting heart rate. So that's our number one besides your name at the top of the form. Uh, resting heart rate, we're going to do a 60 second count. Uh, you could do this uh, with a 60 second count in your carotid artery, just find in the throat. You can do a radial artery, uh, pressure on the wrist, just slight, uh, uh, a little bit slight of center and two fingers pressing. And you're going to do this on your own. So you're going to count on a clock for 60 seconds and you're just counting your pulse for 60 seconds. So um, I'm gonna start my clock uh, for 60 seconds and take my pulse and then I'm gonna write that pulse down under heart rate, resting heart rate, number one result. Okay, so go ahead and get started.
going to go ahead and put that number, which was 69. So I'm going to put that number down under my resting heart rate number one, that little line right there. That's what I'm going to put it at. Or on my paper, I'm just going to write RHR and then what my number is so that I know to transfer it over to resting heart rate. Okay. Um, so we're going to just get started with a little bit of a warm up. Uh, when you're ready, of course, you can always pause the video during um, this fitness test or any workout. Uh, however, you want to try to stay away from stopping videos and trying to go back because um, it will not be connected and I will not be able to see your viewing time. Um, so the first one, we have uh, warming up. We're just going to do a nice, easy knee pull. So just pulling the knee up straight ahead in line with your hips. We're just, <laughs> good balance, right? Just warming up and we'll just go a little bit quicker. Good, and we're gonna do some arm swings across my chest, about shoulder height. And then up and down, alternating. Just warming up those shoulders, upper chest, upper back. All right, from here, we're gonna just do some nice, easy squats. So when we do squats in a, this class, just wanna make sure that our toes are facing forward. Feet are just comfortably um, distance apart. It's really up to you. I like to have about shoulder shoulder width, and I'm just making sure my heels stay on the ground, stay connected, and I'm just bending at the knees. So my rear comes down. My upper body stays tall, okay? From here, body swing. So arms are up, and I'm simply just going to bend at the hips and throw my arms back with a squat, and then pull up with my arms reaching up. So body swings, just warming up our lower back, our glutes, and arms, of course. Okay, uh, hip. So we're going to bend this knee and rotate the hip out, bend the knee, rotate the hip forward. So straight on, it looks like this. Warming up our hips, our groin area, and then we'll switch legs. So these are exercises we'll do every warm up for every class session. It's really important to warm up. Good. Okay. We're going to lunge. So this is this lunge position here. I'm going to place my hand down on the mat and I'm gonna to rotate towards my bent knee. So I'm gonna rotate and reach up with this arm and try to connect my chest to the inside of my knee. Okay, so my leg is straight, my front leg is bent, and then I'm gonna switch. So I'm gonna bring my other leg forward. <clears throat> Deep lunge, hips down, and rotate towards that knee. And come on down, come up, and from here we're going to do rolls. So rolls up on the toes, back on the heels. So we're just going to warm those feet up, the Achilles, the calves. Good. Okay. We're ready to go. Okay, so the first test, you'll see it says upper body strength exercise, uh, shoulder tap push-ups. It says one minute max, so that's the longest that we're doing this, which means whenever it's timed, we're going to be counting how many we do to, for the one minute of time. So um, you're just going to continuously count. So if you stop and then start again, and there's still time left, that's fine. It's when I call time, 
that you're just going to remember the number that you counted and then you're going to write that number down okay so uh traditional or modified so you're going to decide if you're going to do a push-up on with your knees down or your knees off the floor so i'm going to demonstrate both and you pretty much choose which one how you're going to test now most of you will know already i can only do a push-up with my knees on the ground and so what you're gonna do is you're gonna circle modified on your paper. So that just shows you, shows me how you test it, okay? So I'm gonna do the modified first. And so I'm gonna come down onto my knees and my hands. And this is a shoulder tap push-up. Now a push-up, traditionally, we wanna make sure that our entire trunk is lowering to the floor or close to the floor, okay? So our hips and our trunk stay in alignment and they stay together. So there's no bend at the hips. So it's going to look like this for a push-up. My knees are on the ground. My hands are right outside my shoulders distance and right about chest height. So I'm going to bend my elbows. See how my trunk comes down and there's no bend in my hips. Everything is together. Okay. Shoulder tap push-up looks like this. I'm going to tap, opposite hand, opposite shoulder, tap, push up, that's one. And then I'll continuously, two, three, okay? Until one minute is up, keeping count. So it's tap, tap, push up for one. Uh, if you're gonna do a traditional push up, knees are off the ground, I'm gonna tap, tap, push up. Again, my back, my trunk are flat. There's no bend in my hips. Okay. All right. So we have one minute. You decide knees down or knees off the floor. I'll let you know when we're starting and then I'll let you know when we've ended and you're going to mark the number that you counted. All right. Here we go. Shoulder tap push-ups. Ready, go. I'll demonstrate. You're keeping count. And stop okay so I did 15 I'm gonna mark 15 under upper body strength number one on that line I'm gonna write 15 okay so we standing up give yourself a little bit of rest time here a little recovery time um, I'll just talk and demonstrate this through while you're resting uh, lower body strength so we have a squat lunge lunge combo exercise so again this is keeping count until you stop so there's no time limit so it's just as many as you can do so it's a max amount okay um, obviously you want to be able to do the rest of the, <laughs> the fitness test so don't go too extreme um, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna demonstrate the exercise and then I'm gonna go ahead and stop the video. And then that's when you're gonna do your exercise for the lower body, put your number in, and then press play again on the video. And then we'll go on to the next one, okay? So this is what it looks like. It's max number until you stop, you're keeping count. It's a squat, squat, and then it's a lunge, lunge. That's one. So I can quicken it up. 
two. I can slow it down. So it does have to be a full squat and it does need to be a full lunge. When you lunge, you're simply going to step back, staying on the same side that you stepped on and both legs will bend. Trunk stays tall. Up, switch feet. Bend, up, back to squat. Okay, all right. I'm gonna stop the video, go ahead and begin. Make sure you keep count. It's a squat lunge, lunge is one until you stop. Okay, so hopefully you can feel your legs and they're not too jelly <laughs> from that exercise. Uh, we're gonna move on to abdominal strength. And so I like to do this exercise called surrenders because there's no momentum um, created like a crunch or a sit up. Um, and it truly is testing your abdominal strength. Um, this is a surrender, which just simply means that we're in a held position, okay? So you're going to time this exercise, how long you can hold this position without breaking form or until you break form. You can count in your head, you can use a phone, you can use a clock on the wall, whatever you wanna do, okay? I'm gonna demonstrate what's happening here. So this is called a surrender. You're gonna be on your backs. Your legs are going to be straight and lifted up off the mat, just above the hips here. Your upper body is lifted up off the ground, so your shoulders need to be off of the mat which means you're really sinking deep into these core muscles here. So abdominal muscles, hips, okay? My arms are outstretched at my sides, palms facing up, and I'm simply going to breathe, hold, and count. I like to drop my chin down. And really just sink into this exercise. So breaking form would look like this. Legs come down. Head comes down. Okay? So again, you go ahead and get started. I'm going to stop the video. So you're going to time how many seconds you can hold a surrender exercise. All right, you guys. So you just did your surrenders. Good job. Whatever the time was, you put that under um, abdominal strength number one line there. Uh, the next one is our core strength. And so I think there's a misconception that core is just simply abdominals, but core is abdominals included, but also our back, our hips, our glutes, and our quadriceps. And so we have these deep, deep inner pelvic muscles um, that we will also be engaging as well. And so core strength is pretty much a rectangle of your center of your body, okay? So to test the core strength, we're gonna do what's called an up-down plank, okay? Uh, there is some upper body strength involved here because you're on your elbows and you're on your hands. So you will need uh, maybe your mat, go ahead and roll that out if you'd like, or maybe just a towel, okay? Or a pillow or something for your elbows if you need it. So this is timed, this is one minute max, and so you're keeping count of how many you complete in one minute. So I'm gonna demonstrate. So you'll see it's a low to high. So when you low to high plank, a low plank is you're on your elbows, and your feet have a little distance apart, and your hips are pulled down without sinking, okay? So my back is nice and flat. So I'm gonna engage my glutes here. So this is a low plank. Pulling my abdominals in, staying really nice and snug. From here, I'm going to come up onto my hands for a high plank. When I drop down into low, I've completed one. So low plank, high plank, two. Low plank, high plank, three. Try and pop up on the opposite hand each time. 
So I pop up on my left, I pop up on my right, so my trunk stays nice and still. And I'm gonna count as many as I can do in one minute, okay? All right, I'm gonna stop the video. So you go ahead and, actually, you know what? I'll start the time for you. Here we go, get in position for low plank. If you cannot do this without your knees off, with the knees off the floor and you need to modify, you can put your knees on the floor, but I'd rather you didn't, okay? All right, here we go. One minute, keep track of how many you do. Go. Demo of knees down. Twenty five seconds left. four, three, two, one, stop. All right, log your result, your number, or just go ahead and put it right there under core strength number one, okay? Cool, good job. A little recovery until we go into the next exercise, so I'm just gonna talk and walk you through it uh, while we're recovering. So this is our cardio test, and you'll see it says it's just a jumping jack into a plank step back. Um, so this is one minute timed. You're not keeping count here. What we're doing is we're taking your pulse at the end of this, okay? So after one minute, we're all doing this for one minute, as fast or slow, whatever. We're just gonna keep pace for a minute. And then I'm gonna ask you to find your pulse and it should not be hard to find at that point, okay? Uh, heart rate is elevated. We're gonna count how many beats for 10 seconds, that's it, just 10 seconds. I'm gonna ask you to put that number, that 10 second heart rate, down on your sheet. About 50 seconds, 45 seconds later, we're gonna do another pulse for our recovery heart rate. And then same thing, take that 10 second count and we'll put that down on the paper for recovery, okay? So this is what it looks like, jumping jack into the plank step back. So a jumping jack is this, feet and hands apart, hands up top, feet apart, arms down, feet together, and then we're going to plank step back. So that means my hands go down, I'm going to step back into plank, I'm going to step up, I'm going to begin again. So it looks like this in real time. We're going to do this as fast as we can for 60 seconds, okay, for one minute, getting that heart rate up. Modif modified, maybe arms are here, or modified jack here. If you need to slow it down, you can step back and step back, that's fine. Step up, step up, or you can pop your feet back, pop your feet in. It's really up to you, okay? All right, so again, we're not keeping count. We're just gonna go as fast as we can, best effort for one minute. So I'm gonna start the clock for you. Here we go, ready? Go.
going, 10 seconds. And stop. Find your pulse. Ready? Count. Stop. That's pretty fast, right? Okay. Write that down. So mine's 27. So I'm going to write 27 under cardio test number one and then in about 30 seconds I'm going to see how far down my heart rate comes down from being elevated within a minute so this will be logged under recovery heart rate number one this again is a 10 second count Go ahead and find your pulse. Ready? Count. Stop. All right, so my went down to 19. I'm gonna put 19 under recovery heart rate number one, okay? So, you know, it's an eight second or eight count difference which is good. I mean, we do want to come down. Uh, we want to be able to recover within a minute um, of time, of recovery time. And so for, a, for that number to improve, we want our recovery heart rate to come down significantly more, okay? So what we'll do is we'll train um, in a training zone, and I'll talk about that at the next session. Okay, so while you're still recovering, uh, you have some healthy habit questions to answer uh, on your fitness test. And so I'm going to go through this, these with you. Uh, first one is how many days per week, excluding this class for your first answer, okay? So this is prior to this class starting. Have you or do you participate in cardiovascular physical activity for at least 30 minutes. So, for example, if you run for, you know, you go to the park and you run two times a week, you know, for 45 minutes, obviously that's two, so you're gonna put two. Um, but it needs to be at least 30 minutes and um, it needs to be some kind of physical activity. How many days per week? Write that down, number one. Uh, number two, you how many days per week do you use resistance training for muscular development? This is prior to this class starting. And so this would be maybe using a resistance body weight, okay? Um, uh, bands, resistance bands. Um, do obviously weights, um, dumbbells, barbells, Olympic style lifting, um, kettlebells, uh, medicine balls, Anything that's creating muscle development, so, or, you know, resistance training. So go ahead and write that number down. Number three, on a scale one to 10, one being least fit, 10 being most fit, this is for you, um, rate your current fitness health on a scale from one to 10. So I work out quite a bit. Um, for a living and just for personal health. However, I have, you know, not been doing that over the holidays. And so uh, I'm not, you know, as, as fit as I have been uh, recently before the, the break. So I'm going to be realistic and I'm just going to put down on a seven, you know, out of 10. Uh, some of you may be way lower than that. And some of you may be really diligent about everything. And so you're a 10. Um, Next one, what do you consider to be optimal health? So go ahead and take some time to think about that and then write your answer for what to you is optimal health. Um, and then you're going to write down some personal goals. Um, keep this in mind when you're writing down your personal goals. 
you want to be realistic in that you want to know or go into this thinking you can attain this goal okay with the time frame in mind you also want to be time measured so by the middle of the semester i want to be able to do this uh, by the end of the semester i want to be able to, to you know to improve or increase this uh, it might be based on our fitness test today it might be based on personal goals of yours outside of the fitness test um, whatever it is uh, you're going to write those down um, so again realistic attainable time measured and that is that so we're done uh, that's it for today so just make sure that you save your results you submit that to me on canvas to receive your points for the fitness test uh, remember that this is due by sunday at 11 55 p.m um, the next assignment will be this week as well but that will be an actual um, interval workout. So we're gonna go ahead and get started uh, this next assignment. Um, it's gonna be our first you know, um, version of what is to come. So you'll get an idea about that. Um, so just make sure that you have good, comfortable um, shoes with good support. Uh, obviously, a towel, water, maybe a mat, if that, that will help, um, and a good attitude. And so I'm looking forward to uh, taking this journey with you for the full 16 weeks. All right, so that's it. We'll see you next time.